Okay, so here it is, the first and uh, quite possibly the last ever installment of my food vlog. Um, as you'll know, this week we had the pleasure of dining in Output Espresso, a coffee shop on the Lisbon Road in Belfast. Today, you'll be learning how to make sweet and savoury French toast, or as I like to call it, the lost bread. So uh, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Obviously the French do not call this dish French toast, instead they call it pan perdu which essentially means that the bread has started to go stale before being used. Now, pan perdu literally translates to lost bread. So for my lost bread, I will be using just a brioche loaf that I've bought from Tesco. Uh, I've cut it into slices of about three quarters of an inch to an inch, and that should be thick enough just to make sure that it all stays together. Um, now, because we're gonna make a sweet and a savory French toast, we're going to need two different egg mixtures, so I'll show you how to make them. For the savoury toast, uh, all you need to do is beat two eggs uh, together with about 100 milliliters of milk. And then, after it becomes like a nice paste, you can season it with plenty of salt and a little bit of pepper too. Egg mixture ready, and um, you can start to heat your pan. So, I'll just be using a griddle pan today um, on top of the hob. Um, in terms of bacon, you can start getting your griddle warmed up as well. Um, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, the way you want to do it is if you're grilling it, stick some tin foil underneath your grill um, so it doesn't make a mess. And today, I'll be using Tesco Finest bacon and um, streaky bacon, that is, because you know that it's from pasture-raised British farms. Uh, it's always nice to know um, where your meat's coming from. Um, and also then you can stick your gravel to start eating the bacon as well. Now, while your bacon's grilling, you can make a start in your bread. Um, put some oil on the griddle pan um, to stop your butter from burning. And make sure whenever you're dipping your Bread in the egg mixture. Um, don't be letting it for too long because especially if you're using fresh bread, it will fall apart too easily. Spread your butter across the pan. Do a better job than I am. <laughs> and you can start to get the bread there. Right? Just a few tosses on each side I'll do in the egg mixture and then put a piece down on the grill pan. You'll want to give both sides about 90 seconds just to make sure it's nice and crispy but not burnt. So now your toast should be ready to flip. Um, just use a spatula and turn it over. And you should get a nice char on both sides. When you think your toast is ready, um, all it's left to do is plate, right? And as I always say, eat with your eyes first, so it has to look good. Um, take both bits of toast, set them just in the centre of the plate, like so. Always put the nicer one on top, obviously. Like that. Take one slice of bacon and the other, and set them in a nice X on the top. Take just your maple syrup, just standard Clark's, probably the most popular, and go for a nice drizzle over the top of that, make that there. And as the finishing touch, all it's left really is a dust of ice and sugar. Which might, might think's weird with um, bacon and uh, maple syrup, but it really lifts it to the next level. All right. Thankfully, the sweet toast method is quite similar to the savoury toast. Um, one of the main differences is we've got a few more ingredients goes into the custard, and also we're doing a different topping, which will be apples. And uh, you can see here that I've went and picked some organic apples from across the road. I've got a mix of eating apples and cooking apples as well to give it a wee bit of sharpness. But obviously I'll need washed because you don't know what's going on. Um, and in terms of the custard as well, uh, instead of salt and pepper, 
We're still going to use salt, um, just not as much as the first time. Um, got here a teaspoon of cinnamon, which looks like loads. But yeah, that was the teaspoon. Uh, the same again of this vanilla bean paste. Um, if you can't find vanilla bean paste, you can always use uh, vanilla extract. The only thing I would say is maybe don't use vanilla essence. It's not quite the same thing. Um, it's a little more chemically. And uh, finally, two big tablespoons of regular pasta sugar. Uh, just give that a good beating again then. So what we have going on now is about 75 grams of sugar just in the dry pan by itself. Um, we're waiting on it to begin to caramelize. And once it starts caramelizing, begin to throw our apples in on top. In terms of the size of your chopped apples, um, I would suggest maybe doing like different sizes. Uh, that'll mean that, say this piece, I'll give you a large chunk, it'll be like a bit of texture, and this little piece will not. Also, um, leave the skin on, because it'll hold the apple better. It'll hold the apple together better. So hopefully you can see that our sugar is starting to melt a wee bit. All right, I can't hold this steady by myself, but you get the gist anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'll not lie, the pan started attacking me with roasting hot caramel, so just be very careful whenever you're doing this step of the, uh, the tutorial. Um, once you clearly see the apples start to caramelize, um, you can begin to start dropping some water into it, I and mean, then that'll just make the caramel less stiff and spread around the apples a bit easier as well, okay? So you can see the effect that the water has uh, when you add it to the pan. Uh, you can start to see that the apple is now sitting in like its own little syrup. And the longer that you leave that, the nicer it's gonna get. And uh, depending on how much you like cinnamon, I'm not the biggest fan, so I'm not gonna add any more here. But if you really do like it, you can always throw a bit more in um, and make it more and more Christmassy, really. So while your apples are stewing alongside, uh, you can start your bread again. Uh, we're going to go with the oil and the butter. And I'm also going to throw some butter into our apples too. Um, butter shouldn't take too long to spread again. It should still be hot from the last time. You just have to wait for it to heat up. And we can start dipping the bread too. You might want to give the custard a mix again because the, the cinnamon will start to separate out. And again, not too long. You don't want to make your bread all soggy. So uh, we're just about ready to bake. Um, I'll not lie, it, it doesn't look the nicest. Um, I know I said earlier you eat with your, with your eyes first, but um, I have to eat this one with your eyes closed. Oh, let me see. As I said, I've never made it before, so maybe this just isn't the way it's meant to look. But if you can smell the smell of my kitchen right now, it smells really good, so I guess that's the, the next thing that matters, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe it does look quite nice. I've made too many apples. Again, ice and sugar needed. Spruce this up a bit. And just over that's gorgeous, you know. I'm quite intrigued to find out how this tastes. Um, some of the more eagle eyed viewers will notice maybe that um, how dark it's got outside and how long it's taken me to do this first one. But um, at least I'm finally getting to start to eat something. I gave the two savoury ones to, um, to my brother and my dad. So, there we go. You know what? It's actually really good. I don't know if I'm going to myself. I don't know, but that's, that's pretty spot on.
shit is a very dense post. Or as I like to call it, last one. Good. 